Oh shit! Hell yeah! If you don't know what that is, you don't know what TV is, man. Took my damn show off. Praetorian tie for your viewing pleasure. Um, excuse me for a moment. My coffee here. Delicious. Any coffee in a K cup. Turn this down. All right. I saw Jim Skelton's video on his Praetorian tea and it inspired me. By the way, what's up, dude? You the man. It inspired me to do a review on mine. Uh, he has an awesome custom one off. You know, it's the, it's the tea, it's the thinner version, thinner blade, thinner. Uh, scales, everything's just slimmer and a badass looking knife. It's got the uh, flame anodizing, um, the, the blasted um, peaks, no, valleys in the, um, the fluting. And I just love the knife. I would love to feel it. It's, you know, I'm so used to feeling this one. I would love to feel that one, see what it felt like. Um, Second, second reason I want to do this video, I haven't done a review on it, and I've been carrying it for a while now, and using it, doing everything with it, so I can actually give, you know, I've never done a review, I just always share my blades with you guys, do like show and tells, and uh, you know, because I'm usually doing full on customs where people aren't looking for a review, because, you know. With a full custom, your knife could be awesome and theirs could be shit, you know? So, that being said, let's get it on. Awesome action. See how smooth that is? This knife is so smooth. I don't know if they all are. I just know this one is. Mine's dead centered. Lock up so early. And I'm one of those dudes that open my knives like this. All day long. I'm open all day long. Constantly just flipping. It's abuse in a way, but it's just what I do. I'm so used to doing it. It's, just, it's like habit. Like you feel an itch. You'll have your knife, and I have this lanyard on every uh, knife I EDC just hanging out of my pocket. I have the urge to, to yank on that and flip it open. The urge to do that. One billion times a day. Um, just an awesome knife. I mean, look how the blade is so wide. It's so thick. The frame's so thick. Love that uh, cutout for your lock bar. It feels great in the hand. My fingers line right up with these last three flutes or grooves. Um, that's with my pointer finger in this makeshift choil. I'm not sure if that was intended for a choil, but it does serve as one. Um, your these this jimping, this jumbo ass monster jimping is very effective. If your finger's slipping out of that, you know, you'll never find jimping you like. Um, you know, rock solid. Love the clip. This is actually well, first off, it, it's not for delicate cutting tasks. You're not going to take a piece of phone book paper and shave the paper or carve your, your name in cursive in the paper. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. But it does blast through. Um, I cut boneless pork chops with it a little while ago. Cut right through it. I mean, I was surprised how easily it went through it because I had to have a hard time cutting certain things. But it went right through right through the um the pork chops whenever I, I put throw hot dogs on the stove I you know I cut the hot dog down the middle 
you know, it does everything I needed to do in the EDC task. The other day I took it out and carved a tree. I have this tree that I go to every now and again when I walk my dog or I'm just taking a little cart ride. It's pretty far, so I don't stop there often. So every time I do go there, I have an initial in the tree that I re-carve. Like, I'll make it deep. Because every time I go, it's kind of healing up. You know, it'll always be there, but it's healing up and it looks like it can, you know, use refreshing. So I used that the other day like this. Just some fit, fit perfectly in there. His finger's right here. Just going up the tree. It was just real nice to use. And that's exactly what this knife's for. Again, it's not going to shave phone book paper. It's not going to even shave construction paper. But this thick tip, great for, like I said, carving that tree. You got right here. That was good for cutting the meat. In Greg's defense, with this not cutting uh, paper very well, and having a little bit of a hard time cutting uh, certain rope and stuff, unless I give it a couple tries, this is one of the first 50. So, he even said the first 50 are a little thick. They were built for war. The first 50, he was putting like war edges on them. Um, to give strength rather than, you know, laser beam cutting, you know, precision. So, this knife is, is thicker. And th that's also what I like about it, though. For one, it sounds like he's not doing the thick edge anymore. He's doing, like he said, the first 50. That, to me, that means number 51 and after are getting a thinner edge and... I like this thick edge. For one, I kind of like how nobody else is going to be getting it. Like, I don't know if uh, Greg will do certain customizations like that. Like, if you say, I want it thick, I want it thin, I don't know. Um, this, I just like how this one is as thick as configuration a Praetorian tie comes. It has a thicker edge, the thick ass scales, and even the thick pocket clip. That's just a thick-ass sandwich of T.I. right there. I love that. And yes, my breaker is T.I. Greg, I would like a D2 breaker. I know we spoke about that. You told me that you um, didn't have one at the time, which is cool. But I would like to grab one of them. You know, obviously I'll buy it. I'm not saying free, of course. Um, I just love everything about it. I love the clip, how it's not just a bent piece of titanium. I like how it's actually like a thick, you know, it's like a stiff clip, it's like half and half. It's a stiff clip, but it's also kind of a, a spring clip in one combined. I love how it has that little uh, hook in there. It, it rides rather low. I mean, you know, you're getting over two inches down in your pocket. The knife just serves me well. I use it all the time. And it's been great. Like I said, Greg said the first 50 had a thicker edge. And he was willing to to regrind it and make it thinner for us. So, you know, there's no complaining. You can't complain. If you're not cutting through paper, either get it fixed or, you know, we can't. you can't say nothing. Um, what else? Fits great in the, the hand. This grip here, you can either have this grip, a little lower like this. It's really nice in reverse grip, because for one, when you're holding it like this, it's much easier to take your thumb. And right there, you're already in reverse grip. And that's where this chimping really comes in handy. You wouldn't think, but right there, when you're holding the reverse grip, these fingers, right in that chimping, and right here, it's getting right in these flutes. And you're gripped very well right there. Your, these fingers are in the clip, and the clip serves as your LBS. You can hear it and see it. It gives very strong resistance. You would have to intentionally force that out. And the, they're just smooth. I don't know if they all are. Like, check out how smooth this one is. I heard people says they're, say that theirs was kind of stiff. Mine is like... This one's butter. It's just very, very smooth. Anyway, I guess that's about it. 
I love the knife. Highly recommend it. There's a little bit of, like, you know, some kind of drama the other day, about, you know, quarter or whatever. If you're watching my video, please don't take anything from it except positive from this knife. I love this knife. Again, to be honest, like, you gotta be honest, you can't bullshit. It doesn't cut fine things. You're not gonna do no impressive laser cutting. You're not gonna razor blade through paper. But, like he said, on all the knives, let alone the first 50, this one has a war edge. And I just, I even like the way it sounds. He said it was built for war, this one has the war edge. I was thinking, if he has, if he does do customizations, like with your edge thickness, you have a box with a, you know, ready for a check right next to it, war edge. Under that, civilian edge. It's like, people, people like the thicker edge just based on the name. I'd rather have a war edge than a civilian edge. But at the same time, I understand the civilian edge. You can do real life cutting. No, I'm not going to war anytime soon. But let's face it, when you're in the market for a knife like this, for a knife, for a, for a, a bomb proof, you know, tank killer, or a Crusader Forge, or a dire wear, you want a knife that's ready for war. Even though you're not going to war, you want it ready for war. As badass as it can be when we're talking bomb proof, are we actually ever going to blow up the knife? No, but you still want a bomb proof. <laughs> you know, that's just how it is. We want overkill on this knife. I have a lot of knives here. I'll just show you these real quick. I can't see, so I don't know if it's catching it. See, none of them are, are big tank knives. If you guys even saw them. I've got the camera on a stick big pole here I couldn't see um, other words when I was shopping for this knife there was a few in the category the solo crusader forges when it comes to when it came to this knife I wanted a bomb proof war ready battle hardened blade and I picked the Medford the rest are gone I don't have I don't have any other tank knife. I don't need any other one. To me, to me, this is the end all be all of t of tank knives. And it, it can't get any better because if they go thicker, it's too thick. If you're going over a quarter inch, it's too thick. If you're going over uh, three sixteenths, it's too thick. You know, this is it's maxed out, but perfect. And I love the Tonto. It's almost like a Sponto. This is almost like a spear. Like, check that out. That's a spear. But it is more tanto than... than spear. Is it sponto? I don't know. It's kind of sponto. It's kind of sponto. <sighs> Alright, guys. I don't want to blabber too much. Thanks for checking out the video. Um, I appreciate all everybody that watches my videos. You know, hell, you're listening to my ass. Thank you. All right, catch you later.